How's it going? So today we're going to work through the second question that I would recommend out of the 75 you should do. Um, in this question, it's on the easier side of things, but um, I want us to start ramping up our thought process. Um, so as when we start going through more difficult problems, this becomes more and more intuitive. Um, if some of you are not aware, I have a actual Discord group uh, listed in the link below here. Um, if you want to work on these 75 questions, I recommend um, in advance. Um, that is listed in my Discord group. Otherwise, stay tuned on the videos and I will go through each and every single one of those and solve it with you. Um, so the second question we're going to go through is contains duplicates. So let's let's take a quick peek on what this question is all about. Let's first read the question. Given an integer array, nums, return true if any values appear at least twice in the array and return false if any element is distinct. This question is pretty simple. Basically, given an array, your idea is to identify if there are anything that are duplicates, right? Simple. So let's look over some examples. Number one example, you give an array that is one, two, three, and you see a one again. So in this case, does this array have duplicates? Yeah, you return true. Let's look at example number two. One, two, three, four, does this have duplicates? No. So let's look at this one. Does this have duplicates? Yes, because we have one, one, one right here. So when you think about these questions, what would you naturally think about to do? right? You're going to have to, first of all, check every single element, right? Um, so let's write some pseudocode here. So what are we going to do? Uh, let me convert this out first. And to function contains that. Delete this. So let's talk it out before we try to solve this problem. So what are we going to do to find whether or not this array contains duplicates? Well, we're going to have to go through every single one of them, right? So the question is, I'm going to go through array and see if what I see now is something I've seen before, right? Because you're going to go through this array and say, one, is that something I've seen before? No. Is two something I've seen before? No. Is this something I've seen before? No. Is this something I've seen before? Well. Yeah, in this case it is. But in order for us to have an idea if we've seen something before, what do you really, what does, uh, what, what do we have in our arsenal that we can do? That we can use to basically remember whether or not we've seen something in the past. If you think about it, it's really, we need to make sure to allocate some memory such that, you know, um, as we go through the array, we store things that we've seen in the past and um, ideally we want to look up whether or not we, what we've seen in the past exist, um, constant time. So what are those things that are tools, tools to us? So in these type of processes, I like us to think about, okay, uh, on the fundamentals, right? We have two things. We have time complexity and space complexity, right? So one of the benefits of space complexity is that we can allocate certain, you know, allocation of memory to basically help us remember stuff. Right. So in this case, I'm just going to create, uh, create a memory, or in our case, we could be calling it as a hash table or dictionary, same thing. And in these type of data structures, um, it's constant time lookup, right? It's O of one. So we'll probably use that. So what do we do? We first step is we'll create that memory. We're going to go through the array, see if what I see now is something I've seen before. So let's just say here. So if my item is never seen before, put it in memory. If the item, I, if the number, not item, number, if the number, if my number, okay, okay, but this doesn't make sense. Anyways, you guys get the point. If the number uh, does exist in memory, return true. And in this, we'll probably solve our problem, right? So let's, let's try solving this. Cool. So the first step we're going to do is create that memory. So let memory equal to, uh, in JavaScript terms, we just create an object, 
right? Because in JavaScript, key value pairs is constant lookup. This is a perfect data structure to use. So what's the next step we need to do? We need to iterate through the array. So for loop, let i equal to zero, i is less than nums dot length, uh, i is plus plus. All right, and what do we have to do here? Go through the array and see if what I see now is something I've seen before, right? So what do I do? Well, I'm gonna look in my memory saying, well, if my memory at the, so for example, we'll use one, is this something I've seen before in here? So we'll look at nums at one, right? Have we seen this before? So let's, let's make sure to put an example here. An example is, I'm gonna copy the one that we have in the examples given in here. So is one something we've seen before? Because we go nums at position zero, will we go to one, right? Is one something we've seen before? Not right now, right? Because this memory is completely blank. So what do we do, right? If nums at that position is equals to undefined because it hasn't been defined, what do we do? Well, we might as well store something in there. So we could go memory at nums at i will equal to, you could store anything here. You could store the index or you can start a, a string saying like, ha ha, I'll just do ha ha for now. Okay, um, else, what do we do, right? So if the number here exists, so in our case, in the last point, it exists, what do we do? We're gonna return true because we've seen it before in our memory. Now, if we go through the whole array and we don't see it, uh, what do we do? We have to make sure that we return false. All right, let's see if this actually solves the problem. Let's run the code. Bingo, let's submit the code. Cool, we solve it. So let's look at the O of it. Let's look at our, our time complexity, time complexity and space complexity. <coughs> All right, so what's the time complexity of this particular algorithm? Well, it's quite, quite simple. We go through the whole array once, so therefore that's O of N. So what is our space complexity in here? Well, since we're the only thing that's occupying space is this thing, and at the worst case scenario, you might have to go through the whole array, which is of n. So this is O of n. Now, this, this algorithm is pretty efficient. It has a nice balance of time complexity and space complexity, but we can, we can probably um, solve this in another way. It may not be the most efficient, but in real life terms, um, there might be instances where uh, space is very expensive, right? Like memory, for example, might be expensive and we might wanna you know, increase time a little bit and just have no space. So I'll show you a case scenario for that. So how can we solve this and potentially basically, basically not consume too much memory? Can you think about a way to solve this without consuming too much memory? So one of the tips I would recommend if you were to look into how to improve things is identify, well, which are the blocks that are taking the most space and time? So this is the block that takes the most time. Can we improve this? I don't really think so because at the very, at the very minimum, you need to check every single element to see whether or not um, they exist, right? So this is probably, you're probably at the max cap for this. However, do we necessarily need to store or recreate this whole thing in memory? We could probably improve this, right? But how can we do that? Now, we might not need to make some sacrifices in our case. So what can we do in the input array that potentially can eliminate um, space complexity. Think about it. So one of the things I always like to use as a strategy is like, what can you usually do with your input data that you can infer or get additional information from that input data, right? So one of the common things that I like to do is like, can we um, adjust this input array and apply something to it such that when I read it through, I get additional insight beyond just knowing what the actual value is, right? So one of these tools we can do, if you think about it, 
without giving too much away, what kind of information can you get from something like this? One, one, two, and three, right? If you were to sort this array, what kind of insight can you get from this? So you will know that because it's sorted, everything on the left side is always gonna be small. Everything on the right side is always gonna be big. And anything that is potentially a duplicate will always be next to you, right? So in this case, we can simply adjust our code a little bit like this. So if we sort our input array, right? Usually sorting algorithms are n log n, right? O of n log n, right? We sort the array, so we get this nice array that has additional, I'll call it not say metadata, but additional information we can get just based on the nature of things being sorted. Um, the one the, the things I just mentioned, um, we can use this to help us determine if there's duplicates. So now that it's sorted, all we need to do is check whether or not, well, as we go along, does this number exist? Uh, have we seen it before in the past within the array, right? So in this case we have, and then if it does, then we don't even have to check the rest. We could just exit right away. So let's code this solution um, and see if we can improve. It's not really improving. It's probably worse, but it is another alternative solution. So nums.sort a, B, it doesn't mean, it doesn't matter if you're doing ascending or uh, return B minus A, ascending or descending, they all have the same type of feature. So your numbers is sorted right now, cool. And now all you have to do is just go through it and see whether or not there's duplicates. So for let I equal to zero, I is less than nums dot length i plus plus go in here we can actually start going to nums okay oh, sorry if my i is greater than zero because we have to ensure that you know if this is only size one you're not comparing to something that doesn't exist right so at the very minimum you need a size two right so it has to be greater than zero and if my nums at I, uh, excuse the, uh, the dog, it's just barking. If I um, minus one equals two nums at I, then return true. Otherwise, just return false. So let's try this code. Boom. And submit it. Bingo, it solves the problem again. You can solve these problems in several ways. There's never really uh, the right or wrong answer to one, but um, it's always good to uh, just, you know, exercise your brain juice a little bit and think of other new, more creative ways to solve it. There's also another way you can solve this. You get, it's a little bit cheeky. You could use, uh, convert the data structure into an actual set as an example and compare whether or not the set size is the same as the original input array size. You could do something funky like that, but I wouldn't recommend implement, implementing that too, too much because uh, it's not as flexible. Uh, if for example, the input array contains like objects and stuff like that, um, but it is another way to solve it. So um, hopefully you enjoyed this type of uh, question and stay tuned for next week when we're gonna go through harder questions. Okay, thank you. See you guys.